it's it's funny. You, you start trying to put these shows together on a weekly basis, or sometimes you know all of us are doing shows throughout the week as well. And, uh, you know, we're always wondering if there's going to be topics that happen, right? And, and you just got to really thank Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers because they're just the kind of the gift that keeps on giving for for shows like this because it's it's constantly uh, something happening in, in 49er land. And uh, today we had the the news break that. Uh, we knew that the Friars had a little bit of trouble with their during their OTA period, and we had heard that there was some some uh, pushback from the NFL regarding them breaking some rules. And today it came down that uh, they were actually fined hundred thousand dollars. Cal Shanahan was fined fifty thousand dollars, and uh, that was part of the reason they actually the NFL actually shut down their OTAs and took away their last OTA period. So uh, definitely some interesting things. What are your thoughts on, on that, from you guys? So, um, honestly, I, I, I don't really take that much away from those fines coming down today. It's, you know, a lot more of stuff we already knew, right? We knew the 49ers practices got canceled by the league. We knew that they did something wrong in practice. Honestly, to, to me, it's not the fines that matter as much as the information. And, and there just hasn't been a lot of information released about why specifically they were fined the, the team. So I hope the next day or two the NFL is going to give us a little more info on what specific rule the 49ers broke or what specific policy that they didn't follow. So once we get that kind of information, I think we'll have a lot more to talk about. We'll actually be able to understand why the league was coming down hard on the Niners here. But they were one of three teams that, that got some of these uh, fines that were handed out today. So, you know, I, I, I think I, – and from what I, I understand, guys, this is something we kind of knew was coming already, if, I, if I'm not m misunderstanding the whole situation. I think you're right. I think this was the defiance to what we had heard about a little bit uh, about a month or so, about a month or so ago, a few weeks ago when it first went down. How about you, Jesse? Yeah, for me, it it I mean nothing crazy, nothing that surprising. But my mind immediately goes back to, you know, at what point does Shanahan get some culpability for the injuries that are on this team? You know, I mean, people are are pissed that I bring it up, and I brought it up on Twitter and been having some really good back and forths, some intelligent back and forths. But, you know, people really get up in arms when you want to call out coach or or question anything that he does like he's he's been perfect and he has it. You know, I love Shanahan. He's he's certainly a probably a top seven coach in my mind. But there are things that that he has flaws about. And when you have players from other teams come out and say that they practice too hard. Now you've got fines for it. You're missing really important time especially for some of these young guys to get in the building and and learn the offense and just learn how to be pros and that gets taken away from you especially when a lot of these guys are second year players and got none of that last year that's an important week that i think was missed out on now is it gonna be the difference in winning and not winning in week seven probably not but to me it's just adding it's it's just snowballing on the fact that there are legitimate concerns injury wise with this team and i think that it to me it just raises some more red flags but yeah no definitely i think it definitely raises the red flags and and that injury concern and that piece that you bring up jesse that's i think that's 100 percent valid when you when you take into consideration everything that's going on with this team for in the last four years and to have them getting hit by the league for, for these violations, I think it's a big deal. I think people are kind of glossing over it because, you know, it's in the off season and, and it, it's the, the fine and the punishment wasn't really overly tough, but it, it, you know, this stuff plays a role in, in why they've had so many issues with injuries over, I think over the last four years. And, and for me, beyond just that, I think the, the one thing that I kind of took away with it or the question I had is, is why was, why did Kyle Shanahan go up there and, and really not say the truth about what was happening at the end of the, you know, with, the, with what was going on. That's the piece for me, because he went up and, and acted like, you know, he had planned this all along, when in fact it was the NFL that was taking it away from him. So what what really did the 49ers get out of doing that? And then you kind of throw in on top of that, you know, from a, a, the, the whole way that the the draft went down and kind of the like kind of snickering at the at the national media with the mistakes that they've made. Uh, in terms of the quarterback situation and it just really seems like a kind of a strange way to be kind of handling this with the pr and, and that kind of thing and you from a, from an organization that's usually really cautious about that kind of stuff so those are kind of you know my takeaways and, and the one other thing and i mentioned this on twitter today is when is jed york going to get tired of, of covering up for for the for uh 
Cal Shanahan's mistakes. You know, this is now $350,000 in fines he's having to cut checks for since September uh, for rules violations. So at what point does, does that become an issue? You know, those are my takeaways on it. Yeah, and I think in, in terms of the PR thing, kind of just going back to that, Jack, um, you just wonder why the 49ers haven't said much. So like kind of what you were saying, they don't seem to be, you know, overly communicative right now about this issue. And if I was an NFL team, I would be trying to get out in front of this. I would be letting the fans know exactly what was happening. I would have a PR release that actually informed them about what was going on than some just cookie cutter press release so i i just wonder kind of like what you guys were saying a second ago when are the 49ers going to take more responsibility with this kind of stuff and, and understand that this does affect the fans and i think just going to what you said jack people are glossing over it a little bit and kind of are giving the team not a break but people aren't people aren't talking about it as much as you would expect them to so i just wonder how much responsibility this team is willing to take with this kind of issue or Maybe it might just be something where it's a little issue, but no matter what it is, the fans should know what's going on. And I think it's weird that it, there's kind of this, I don't want to say misinformation around it, but they're certainly not being overly truthful about what went down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, to me, there's, there's just an arrogance about Kyle Shanahan that I, I frankly, I don't know. I don't enjoy it. I like that he's confident. I, I like confidence and all that, but it just seems to me like he – maybe I'm reading the situation wrong, but I feel like he's driving a wedge between the fan base a little bit and then also between he and Lynch, in my personal opinion, right? Because what's happening is is there's a group of people that think that Shanahan can do no wrong. No matter what, he's never at fault. The injuries, not his fault. The players drafted, not his fault. Fourth oldest roster, now second oldest roster, not his fault. Super Bowl play calling, not his fault, right? Like that's that's a big chunk of the fan base. And then there's people like myself that are critical of all those things, right? And so there's a, a wedge driven in the fan base. But then when you watch the way that he conducts himself at press conferences and things like that, and yesterday and i know that we'll get a little bit further into it but yesterday you have lynch talking and basically saying this team's primed and ready to win and then you got shanahan coming out and saying well we have a lot of work to do basically contradicting everything that his gm just said i don't know i just feel like he's got an arrogance about him and feels like he can do no wrong and he's smarter than everybody and the fan base is eating it up so we'll, we'll see how long how long they eat it up for yeah, the last thing I'm going to just say on this one is is that, uh, you know, our, our colleague with all 49ers, uh, East Bay Chris, he put out an article back in June, and I just retweeted it for everybody in the middle of the month. And it was basically stating that the 49ers have an, an accountability problem. And I think that that's really what this gets down to. And so I just kind of re I retweeted that. I just wanted to kind of shout that out because that was a really a really good article at the time. And I know that he got some, some heat for that. But, it, I mean, this is just another example of what he was getting at on that. And uh, so instead of coming up and saying my own thing, that was – Got to give Chris a shot for that because that was a really good article that he put out, and I think people should go back and revisit that one. So, 